A cyber attack at the kind of scale never seen before happened late last night in India time and more than 99 countries were affected including Britain, Russia and many others. The NHS of the National Health Service in Britain got affected the most. Uh, their hospitals, uh, all their computers shut down, locked down and then they started sending out uh, WhatsApp screen grabs of what was really happening. It was, uh, they've been locked out of their computers. We understand from the limited uh, information we have right now from various media outlets across the world that it could have emanated from a technology known as WannaCry. It's a malware, a malicious software, if you will. And uh, it was, in fact, taken out of the NSA of America uh, by a group of hackers known as Shadow Brokers, who then as a protest to what's happening politically in America, a protest against Trump, then shared it very openly with other hackers. That's the initial information we have right now. But this does put up a lot of questions, not just for India, which unfortunately by consensus we understand is not prepared to handle an attack of this nature or of this scale. India, of course, perhaps could be the worst prepared for an attack if it comes to that. We'll come to big questions in just a bit. Before we come to big questions in my panel, take a look at the story. Is this the beginning of the cyber war in the world? The world? A question which everyone is asking as a global cyber attack leveraging hacking tools has infected tens of thousands of computers in nearly 100 countries. The most disruptive attacks were reported in Britain where hospitals and clinics were forced to turn away patients after losing access to computers. First thing to do is train people not to open emails that they weren't expecting and to be suspicious of the kind of language that's used to create a sense of urgency. And you know, partly it's about having policies in your organisation that you won't use that language. The second thing is if you do get an email that you weren't expecting and you open it and put a document, don't open the document. And then the third one is if you open the document and it pops up a box, don't click OK. Read what it says, realise you don't understand it, and assume that clicking OK on something you don't understand is bad. So don't do that. However, there is no such breach reported in India. But is this the dawn of the cyber apocalypse? Is India ready for such a hack? Bureau Report, News X. All right, big questions on The Nation at 9 tonight. Does the attack prove that any online service is always susceptible? Question number two tonight on The Nation at 9 is modern technology, the Frankenstein of our times. What are the lessons from an attack of this scale for countries like India? And when you speak of India, my last question tonight is what are the implications for India? Are we prepared at all? Or are we sitting ducks just waiting for an attack like this to happen to compromise our online data those are the questions tonight i'm asking my panel of guests joining us tonight is karnika Seth. she's a cyber law expert she joins me in the studio as does upendra singh software and it expert simon marx uh, is a journalist uh, he's joining us live from the u.s before i come to you uh, simon i'd like to start with you right now what exactly do we know uh, of this attack this has affected more than 90 countries and the little information we have right now suggests that this could have been uh, this could have emanated from technology that was developed by the NSA in the US is that right absolutely that is what appears to have taken place here I mean it's very apparent that this was an extremely damaging coordinated widespread attack as you know on numerous sites around the world particularly hitting and targeting the National Health Service in the UK, but it wasn't restricted uh, in any sense to the UK or to that particular uh, sector of the country's economy. Here in the United States, Federal Express, the big shipping company, uh, was hit partly by this ransomware attack. Now, the US government, through the Department of Homeland Security, says that it is reaching out to countries around the world and offering what it describes as uh, technical assistance and advice on how to overcome this ransomware attack. Uh, and it would seem that the United States is well positioned to do that because it may well have been that the software that these hackers used in order to cripple, for example, the computer system uh, of the National Health Service in Britain was actually developed right here in the United States by the National Security Administration. We believe that the NSA, uh, the National Security Agency rather, 
uh, realized that there was uh, a problem uh, with Microsoft's software. And they realized that it uh, was something that they could exploit and use, they hope, to America's espionage advantage. Later, uh, the information that they had gathered and the digital tools that they had developed uh, to uh, exploit that deficiency uh, within the Microsoft system was stolen by hackers. The United States suspects by hackers in Russia. Uh, and it was only after those digital tools were stolen that the US government then, it seems, reached out to Microsoft to make them aware of the deficiency uh, in their Windows system. So uh, the National Security Agency here appears to bear some potential responsibility for not having alerted Microsoft to the problem earlier while America's spy masters were seeking to exploit the deficiency and learn what they could, we presume, from the computer systems of foreign powers that they were at the time not trying uh, to break into. So Simon, uh, the US government not confirming any of that, but that's what technology experts here believe. Yes, the, 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 all this information is fascinating, uh, not, not just because uh, the, the, the NSA perhaps could have been involved in not just developing the technology, but also the kind of impact it's had all over the world. I'm being told that Russia perhaps is one of the worst hit and they're now officially claiming that no sensitive data has been lost. But that, of course, uh, we can only take their word for it. The fact that this happened at such a massive scale across Europe, uh, in countries like Russia, in Britain, uh, America, I believe, has not been really touched by it, although it might have emanated from there. Do we understand whether or not there have been arrests made or investigation on, uh, apparently? Because we are also hearing a name called Shadow Brokers, a group of hackers uh, who got their hands on their technology and then have claimed, gone on to claim that they've shared the technology openly with other hackers. Well, look, they're certainly interested in trying to find out who these shadow brokers are. There is some skepticism here about the Russians' claims that Russia itself was targeted by this ransomware. Skepticism because the U.S. government, of course, uh, is suspicious that perhaps these digital tools that the NSA had developed were stolen by Russian hackers. So no arrests have been made, made no official statements uh, made about that. But the tools that the NSA developed are the kind of tools that the US government, for example, uh, has reportedly used in its attempt to destabilize the military hardware systems of North Korea. As you know, North Korea keeps trying to test uh, its nuclear uh, capability, and right. many of their test missile firings and test launches go wrong. It's believed here that that could be because the United States has used these very deficiencies to try and break into North Korea's military hardware. So the United States potentially has considerable egg on its face, but uh, also has been using these digital tools for a while in order to advance America's espionage interests around the world. Right. That puts the U.S. government now in a somewhat difficult position if those very tools were used in these attacks. Uh, Simon, one more question before I, I turn to my panel in the studio. Uh, we are being told that this attack was somehow, uh, I wouldn't say halted, but uh, somehow debilitated or mitigated accidentally by a British uh, researcher. And uh, I don't want to make it sound trivial, but that would imply that we are at the mercy, really, uh, of hackers who can play with our online data. And the only thing that can slow them down is the accidental hero here. Right. Well, there's no question that technology experts on this side of the Atlantic say that all of this is the nightmare scenario playing itself out. Uh, and it has the potential to play itself out in an even broader, uh, more dangerous way uh, over time. The National Health Service in the UK particularly, uh, it's believed by technology experts, had not upgraded uh, much of its software. Microsoft, after the US government made the company aware of the problem, did create a patch to protect computer systems from this ransomware. But if you hadn't installed the patch, and it would seem that the National Health Service had not done that, then you're still susceptible to these kinds of attacks. Any industry, uh, any company, any economic sector that is relying on uh, older style technology, older style software, 
that has not been upgraded and not been maintained uh, is at risk. Right. And it's very difficult, given how ubiquitous all of this technology is around the world now, to protect all of these systems. A nightmare scenario indeed. Uh, um, Simon, try and stay with us if you can. It's been uh, fantastic talking to you, getting the details of what's really happening here. Pawan uh, let me just turn to you very quickly. Simon, of course, has described it as a nightmare scenario, and clearly it feels like it's one especially if you're in India, if, if, uh, if Britain can't handle it, if, if countries across Europe can't handle it, if, if the top spy masters in the U.S. don't know what exactly is happening, is India prepared for an attack at this scale at all if it were to occur? I think India is thoroughly unprepared to deal with this kind of a challenge. Let me give you an example. Your little channel was decided to take this head on on prime time. Well, we talked to Shadi Simon. I'm not even bothered about this kind of historical very, very clear that India has not done its homework in terms of protection and preservation of cyber security. Well, we don't have a cyber security law in place. The Indian cyber law is not a law on protection and preservation of cyber security. On top of it, ransomware All right. has uh, never been... Just, uh, sorry to interrupt you there for a second. There is uh, some slight rustle in your mic. We'll try and fix that in a bit. But let me just take the same question to, uh, to Karnika then. Karnika, yeah. uh, is India prepared at all, given the fact that major countries across the world, which have a higher uh, understanding perhaps of preparedness level uh, against cyber attacks, are reeling uh, uh, with this attack right now? Well, this is uh, not certainly an attack which has happened for the first time in India. Mm. And uh, we've had, uh, you know... So India hasn't been affected yet yes, as it, much, but it, it could is, be in the future. It yet. could be yeah. because uh, there have been uh, other ransomware attacks like Telstra, Crypt, and uh, uh, Lock Android, and Locky. Uh, all those, uh, if you see globally, if you see globally, then uh, almost USD 209 million uh, of loss ha it has caused. Mm. And it's only happened because of some malware which infects a particular system mm. and uh, it spreads. Uh, once it spreads, it encrypts the data which is contained on the system. Uh, to, to what extent it will do? Uh, it will basically lock all the files. You will not be able to uh, open any kind of file. It will have a change in extension and that uh, they will demand a ransom so for Essentially, it. you're at the mercy of the hackers. Unless yes. you pay the money, yes. you're doomed. India is digital India today. Yeah. We, are, we are moving ahead in terms of technology. Mm. We've, we've spent quite a lot of time on it. However, I would say that whatever steps we are taking, we really need to be fast. All right. Because uh, we need to catch up with what is happening. The criminals uh, you know, uh, kind of take advantage of the d running technology, mm. uh, and there are very many exploits available like this Microsoft uh, you know, yeah. OS exploit. So yes. it was basically the uh, eternal blue exploit which was used in this case. Mm. And that uh, has been built to make the malware wanna cry. That's what has led to whole, all of this lands. And this is not the first attack. time WannaCry has been and used. And they're asking yeah. for bitcoins. Yeah. Bitcoins. The, bitcoins. Not, not money, but bitcoins. It is bitcoins. Right. Yeah. So that the uh, anonymity is there on the cyberspace. It's very easy uh, for criminals to use this medium to con you know, have uh, attacks, uh, onion rooting and other technological means to actually hide their real identity. Uh, uh, going back to Pawan, since yes. you, your mic is working now, Pawan, please finish up what you're saying right now. And also, the fact that these hackers seem to be three steps ahead of everyone else right now, criminals usually are, Absolutely. In the law enforcement agencies, uh, would you say, given the fact that uh, let's let's leave across India for uh, let's leave a part India for a bit here, and I don't want to sound uh, completely as like a like a doomsday say uh, or, or or a naysayer, but has technology and the advancement in technology become the Frankenstein of, of modern times? Because it seems to be the monster we created, the humans created. Now we can't control it. I think I completely agree with you. Yeah. We are now facing a scenario where, with the advent of the dark net coming in with the ransomware coming all around, mm. it's going to be a very, very complicated situation. And the bigger issue is that none of the stakeholders are even adequately prepared to deal with it. I was just reading that Europol has said that it will require a very complex international investigation. I'm not even confident whether we will be able to even go and find out the origin, because the origin itself may be hided behind the shouts mm. of anonymity on the dark net. Mm. But coming back specifically, I think we need to look at it from another angle, which is that this needs to be a wake-up call for countries across the world that they will have to rise above their parochial national interests and come up with an international cyber legal framework which can allow an international global response to these kind of global challenges. Which is missing, which is right missing now. completely. Yeah. We don't yet have an international uh, cyber law treaty in place. I've been talking since 2015 for a need for an international convention on cyber law and cyber security. And that can be in the form of 
common minimum denominators of uniform principles that countries would normally agree to. But of course, that's going to be subject to the political will of the thought leaders. But more significantly, that's the international level. At the national level, the national governments must take their own uh, things in their own hand and try to ensure that they have adequate legal frameworks. And let's now face it, ransomware will have to be made as a very heinous cybercrime in a majority of cybercrime jurisdictions, which currently it is not. It's, it's a cyber terror attack. Thing. It's nothing short there of that. It's a, it's important. a cyber terror attack, basically. Yeah. It it is is a cyber terror. I will say yeah. this is cyber terrorism yeah. because Section 66F of the IT Act very clearly states when there is a contaminant or, you know, which is infecting a system which leads to denial of access attacks. And this is leading to denial of access attacks not only uh, affecting or damaging a property of an individual or an mm. organization, but this is affecting public at large. Mm. And this is affecting governments, or, uh, you know, agencies, banks, or even hospitals. Now, this is something which is immediately, uh, I would say, will fall under the purview of the scope of the Section 66F of the IT Act, which has imprisonment up to life imprisonment. Okay. Um, so that's uh, something which is very, very very, quickly, very, very quickly, uh, As far as the response to such ransomware uh, attacks are concerned, if you can... Uh, uh, just give us an idea whether or not they're actually effective. Have they been effective abroad uh, in past uh, attempts uh, such ransomware has been floated around the internet? And what can be really done to actually counter it effectively? See, uh, uh, to start with, I would actually like to you know show you a different uh, side of uh, uh, this coin. Uh, as my fellow panelists have uh, told me, uh, told us like the things from a legal point of view, like when we face these kind of things, how uh, uh, strong we are to face them legally and what could be the implications. I, I want to start from how actually this happened, mm. from where this actually happens. Mm -hmm. so today, uh, if we talk about India, we, we cannot because we are into a global market today. Technology in the age of internet is not uh, limited to one area. The technologies which we are using, now the hacker, hacker is simply, you know, using those uh, loopholes which have been left open by the companies who have taken over our system. Like if I simply talk about Microsoft, we are using all operating systems of Microsoft. Now Microsoft to, uh, today says like there was a security lapse in that and later on we have given a patch to you know handle that security thing. But why that uh, security loophole was left intentionally mm -hmm. and in US where uh, it, it's uh, again a US based company that the, most of the users are in India or US. So th th they have already used those uh, updated those patches but there are certain uh, uh, markets where those patches were not implemented. Mm -hmm. So point is this, uh, uh, we just need to look at from this way, like why this happens. So we need to have some uh, bodies, some uh, governing councils who need to look at from this way, like if a certain thing which is being used by people, consumers in a country, whether they are uh, secure, whether they are foolproof or not. So we, we should not be left on the mercy of a company who's, you know, creating an OS and uh, uh, like uh, leaving things open to hackers. For okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, no, Simon Marks, very quickly, uh, I know you have to go and we have limited time with you. So I'm just going to uh, try and squeeze in a couple of questions to you right now. Another important question that nobody seems to be asking right now is whether or not anyone has actually paid the ransom. And if you go by reports coming in right now, it would seem that some companies, especially which are at a higher exposure risk than others, would have had no choice. Well, there's no indication from here, certainly in the U.S., that any U.S. companies have paid any kind of ransom. But there was a big conversation uh, going on over the last, uh, what, uh, 16, 17 hours uh, since this started to unfold about the extent to which companies were going to have to pay the ransom in order to secure any information uh, that may have been downloaded off their systems that the hackers were holding on to. Look, th there's an issue here, of course, about personal responsibility. I mean, bear in mind that if you look back at last year's American presidential election, the Democratic Party here lost a treasure trove of information right. simply because one senior official uh, responded to an email that looked like it came from Google, except it didn't come from Google, it came from hackers. And that then gave the hackers access to the Democratic Party's uh, servers. But there's also governmental responsibility here. President Trump just a few days ago ordered government departments across the United States uh, to start thinking about how to enhance their own particular cyber security, but that only takes care of the U.S. federal government. It uh, doesn't take care of each of the individual 50 states right. and certainly doesn't deal with the transnational issues that, of course, at some point have to be addressed.
Uh, clearly. Thank you, Simon Marks, for getting us all these inputs from Washington, D.C. Great to speak to you again. I'll get closing comments from my panel in the studio here, starting with you, Pawan Dugal. I have three minutes. I'll give you one minute each. What exactly does, should the response, as far as India is concerned, and I know you spoke about an international sort of response to it, but that's years, perhaps not even decades away, and I, nobody's even talking about it right now, except for perhaps this panel right now on TV. Nobody else is talking about it. Correct, and therefore at the national level, couple of things. Number one, India needs to get its homework in order. We need to really concentrate on cyber security. Therefore, having a national cyber security legislation is a topmost priority. Determin determining the roles, duties, and responsibilities of all stakeholders in the event such an attack like this one takes place has to be the number one priority. And further, ultimately, we will need to inculcate a culture of cyber security amongst all users, and that can happen if we can actually introduce cyber law education and cyber security law education in the school curriculum from the first standard onwards, mm. apart from having dedicated courses on cyber security at the university level. All right. Uh, to I you agree. then. Karnika. I think uh, we would also uh, need more proactive role of the CERT. Uh, it's already performing a, a good role, but uh, we need to have more proactivity in the terms of uh, detecting what kind of vulnerabilities exist in different OSs and other softwares which people you know, generally use. Uh, apart from that, cyber education awareness is certainly something that uh, we all need. At uh, Every stakeholder needs to contribute to it. It has to be a multifaceted approach. And thirdly, a consumer, everyday consumer needs to be aware. Put some good anti ransomwares or anti spywares apart from what we generally use as an antiviruses. Mm. And be, be very careful on opening any kind of web links from untrusted sources. So you're saying start with basic encryp encryption. Basic. Everyone should encrypt uh, not just their password, but yes. also their data as well. Now that the Aadhaar is there, yeah. we have even other stakes to you know, take care Absolutely. of. Absolutely. We it's have health linked. records, we have biometrical information online, and therefore we need to be very, very careful what links we open and what kind of attachments to an email are we opening, because this is actually spread through that. Absolutely. The yes. modern-day Frankenstein. I'll give the last word to Upendra Singh. See, technically, if I say like... Mm. Uh, uh, precaution is definitely the best thing. Mm. But today the ransom where, uh, like, they, they are uh, able to control the basics of your OS. They are, uh, means whatever precaution you do, they are able to read your disk. They are able to read any kind of data on the disk. They can read all kind of your wallets uh, without, means you take all the precaution, but still they are able to uh, decrypt them. They are able to, you know, uh, pull, uh, pull data from them. Mm. So point is, uh, from a, from a uh, common consumer uh, perspective, there are very less things when a person, uh, like, uh, 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 hacker wants to you know get into your machine and get your uh, crucial information he can still get whatever whatever precaution you do what you need to do there has to be some expert uh, committees expert people who need to monitor these kind of things uh, and they could uh, they, they are the main people who can stop these things what i feel all right ethical hackers of course can help but that of yep. course is also a rarity uh, thank you for joining us pavan dugal uh, karnika seth as well as upendra singh and simon marks who joined us from uh, Washington, D.C. And remember, modern-day Frankenstein. I don't want to scare anyone else, but start encrypting your WhatsApp messages to start with. That's all the time we have on The Nation.